So it's my most loved acid and it's almost always on my list of ingredients that I recommend, but it's still not as well known as I would like it to be, although I'm working on that. It is azelaic acid and it's so important that I would say it's an essential part of my everyday clinical practice because it is that versatile and that beneficial, but it has been a slow starter and it's really only in recent years that it started to appear in over-the-counter products. And of course now there is a rush to get azelaic acid out there and be more widely known. So today I wanted to answer some of the questions that I keep getting DMs about over on Instagram. So it seems that despite it being more and more well known, it's still not fully understood how to use it to get the most out of it. So I want to get to the bottom of that today and give you all the tips and tricks I find essential to my practice. And I'm speaking from experience as somebody who has used azelaic acid on their skin for more than a decade. It's essential to me because it helps with my tendency to redness, my tendency to breakouts. It's great for texture, it's a great antioxidant. There's really very little that I find it doesn't help with when it comes to my skin. But in terms of whether it's right for you, let me go through the situations where I commonly recommend it to my patients. So first up, as I said, it's great for breakout prone skin. So it has some of those poor clearing benefits that you find with a retinoid. And it's certainly uh, a real hero when it comes to treating sensitive skin that might not be able to tolerate retinoids because it helps normalize keratinization, basically stopping those pesky little comedones from forming. So that's the first instance. Um, and I find it really essential for breakout prone skin in pregnancy, particularly in that first trimester where the skin can be really stormy. Next, it's essential for treatment of rosacea. And I think this is probably the most important topical because not only does it help calming the acute inflammatory phase of rosacea, but it really helps get to the core of the problem of rosacea by dialing down that overly enthusiastic inflammatory response to our environment. So for the long term of the skin, I think it's the one that has the most chance of reducing the progression of your rosacea. So it's really helpful in redness prone skin. And I've certainly found that's been the case with mine. Then it's also helpful in pigmentation prone skin and melasma because it inhibits the effect of tyrosinase, that rate limiting step in the production of melanin. And again, helpful in pregnancy where melasma is so common. Um, where else? We use it in perioral dermatitis where the skin is in that finicky, fiddly state, little bumps appearing here and here, sometimes in response to skincare, sometimes just one of those things. Is it acne, is it rosacea? It's probably somewhere in between. But again, it's really helpful. Um, and as I said, it's a good antioxidant, it's good for texture, so it has anti-aging properties as well. So really the question is, when is it not helpful? So let's get into a demo of how I use it in my morning skincare routine and how we go about fitting it in to the rest of our routine so that it melts seamlessly. So let me show you how I use azelaic acid. I'm gonna be doing my morning routine with it. So I'm gonna use Flawless Brightly Serum, which has 10% azelaic acid, which is the highest strength before you get into the prescription space of 15 and 20%. Now it's got a pretty typical um, consistency for an azelaic acid product. Um, and in terms of where it goes in the routine, so I've got clean skin, it's just dry now. And if I was using vitamin C as well, I put the vitamin C on first, but I'm going in with this alone because it has some additional ascorbyl glucoside. And if you're also using something like niacinamide, that can kind of go anywhere in your routine because it penetrates into the skin super easily. So I would tend to use that after an azelaic acid product. You can find that easily in moisturizers and even sunscreens. This is already in there, 5% niacinamide, but if you're just using a straight up azelaic acid serum, for example, The Ordinary or Paul's Choice, feel free to put niacinamide on afterwards. So if you're using a plain azelaic acid serum, vitamin C before, niacinamide after. And I wouldn't tend to use any other acids alongside azelaic acid. And I wouldn't tend to use benzoyl peroxide 
in addition to azelaic acid, I would be an either or situation if you're acne prone. So if I had spots, I would do benzoyl peroxide on the spot, and then I might do azelaic acid on the rest of my face. So that brings me on then to dosing. And I think it's so important to get into the habit of dosing all your actives, azelaic acid um, included. So I teach patients to use their fingertip, which is the distance from the crease to the end of the finger when dosing out their actives. So with this one, the pump makes it easy, of course, but if you're using a tube, it's the same. You wanna get into the habit of visualizing what you're using so you can be consistent with it on a daily basis or an alternate daily basis as you're using it. So half a pump is about half a fingertip or a big P, however you want to mentally imagine it. But I'm gonna be using a full fingertip which is a line as long as the, from the crease to the end or about three centimeters long. So that's enough to treat a full face. Now, do you need to treat the full face? I would say yes. I treat azelaic acid the way I would a retinoid in that you can get benefits from using it all over your skin. So even if you're just acne prone in the lower face or you've just got a bit of periol dermatitis or you're treating rosacea, which is mainly in the mid face, know that azelaic acid is going to give you additional skin benefits above and beyond treating the problem because it improves texture, it improves radiance, lessening pigmentation, and it's a good antioxidant. So you'll not really lose out. And I think it's a bit of a, a fail really not to get those lovely benefits all over your skin. You don't want to just lessen the problem. You want to improve the overall appearance of your complexion with what I call improved field change. So when it comes to dosing your skin correctly for field change, then that's when I implement the 13 dot technique. For you, those of you who are not familiar with that, um, it's where I use a small amount evenly distributed all over the face like so. So I'm gonna do three dots on my forehead, three per cheek, and then the final four, two on the chin, two on the nose. This is just dosing the face. Then I'll take the rest, evenly apply it to my finger pads, and then I'm gonna move it over the skin. And basically, it ensures you get a nice even layer all over. The problem with just treating your trouble areas is that you often end up putting far too much product and then you run into irritancy problems. You know, these, these ingredients are potent and punchy and you don't want to over treat because then you get irritable, skin gets dry, maybe a bit sore. And next thing you know, you're having to skip a couple of days, you get disheartened and you end up abandoning shit. And we don't want that. So I'm carefully, but thoroughly massaging it in so that I treat all the surfaces of my face evenly, making sure to go over the nose where you wanna get that nice pore clearing effect. And, you know, that's almost in now. So I'll give another minute longer, but that's it essentially. So firm massage until it's completely absorbed, wait a minute or two, the whole process takes about three minutes, and then you're fine to go on to your next layer. And much like retinoids, I'm very careful. I don't go inside the brow bone, so I don't treat the eye area. It doesn't really have any benefits that are particularly helpful for the eye area. And of course it can irritate. And I don't go too close to the lips, so I stay well clear of the vermilion border. Um, so that's really important to get it in the right place. Don't let it build up in the sides of the nose, the crease there, because that's a place where product can collect and it's naturally prone to being a bit kind of dry and flaky and the next thing you know, your makeup's attaching and your sunscreen won't blend evenly. So just almost wipe that area clear. Um, and you can basically build up azelaic acid usage from, I often say start every other day, especially if you're in the sensitive skin brigade. So you've got, you know, you know you've got sensitive skin or you've got rosacea or periol dermatitis or you're eczema prone. So start off every other day with that half a fingertip amount that I mentioned, but you can build up to twice a day with a full fingertip quantity, depending on the situation. So 
In pregnancy, for instance, I'll get my acne patients to use it twice a day, the same for my rosacea patients. And even in context of melasma in pregnancy, again, twice a day is ideal at a time when you cannot use retinoids. Um, and if you're using it at night time, it can be built into the product that you use. Oftentimes you will be using a retinoid and there are some products now, including nightly serum that combine a retinoid and azelaic acid. I personally don't tend to recommend azelaic acid as a separate step if you're using something like uh, tretinoin or even retinol where the preparation hasn't been combined um, in a single formulation. So if that's the case, use your retinoid at night and stick to using azelaic acid in the morning by itself. So that's my hyper-detailed, all-encompassing guide to using azelaic acid. It is one of my favorite active ingredients. I want you guys to get the most out of it because it is so versatile and well tolerated by sensitive skin and all those tricky skin types, rosacea prone, peril dermatitis, sensitive with acne. So please do let me know if anything's I haven't covered in terms of its use. I hope that was everything. I hope that answered all the questions I was receiving on social media about it. It is a wonderful active ingredient and I hope you enjoy using it. Bye for now.